Good morning. <clears throat> I'm just finishing up my breakfast. Got to get my coffee yet. Anyway, we'll get started working on this planter here. Let's uh, tear apart a fertilizer opener, see if we can get one of them gauge wheels apart. We've got to pull this uh, cotter pin out. See that? There's a cotter pin in here, and we got to take this bolt out, and then that should slide right out. Should. I don't know that it's going to, but that's what we're going to find out. All right, well, I got one off. And it came off really easily, so that's a good sign for the rest of it. Um, bearings all seem to be okay. I do want to measure this blade just to see how much wear it's got on it. May have to uh, replace them, but we'll see. The uh, boots don't look terrible. There is some wear to them, but um, yeah. That went better than I expected it to, so... Let's do the next one and see if it goes just as smoothly. Well, I've got one that's going to prove to be a bit more difficult. So this is all rusted up pretty good here. And that uh, roll pin itself is actually seized in there. I can't get it to move. So I'm going to have to get a punch and a hammer and maybe try and break it off here and punch it out. I don't know. But this one's going to be difficult. Well, this is going much better than I anticipated. Uh, it's been maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I've got half of them done. So uh, it was really just that one so far that I've had any trouble with, and that was just getting the cotter pin out mostly and then the bolt, and once I got those out, it, uh, it the shaft came out okay. So that is good. We'll get the other side here done, and then uh, start taking a little closer look at some of the components, see if there's anything we need to replace. If not, we'll start cleaning stuff up, and. Uh, we probably won't put anything back together just yet, but we got to take apart some of the openers and that stuff too. So uh, we'll keep moving. All right, before I do this last one here, oh, by the way, these all other ones all came off really easy. Um, I'm shocked. I really thought this was going to be a struggle, but uh, we got them. So anyway, before I take this last one off here, I uh, told you guys yesterday I was going to kind of walk you through how this planter works and everything on it. And it occurs to me that if I take this last one off, it'll be harder for me to explain it without it on there. So. Uh, what these are, all these um, openers, I guess, that you would, that are sticking out in front of the planter, this is not what actually plants the seed. This is our, uh, what's called a single disc fertilizer opener. So this is what we are putting our liquid fertilizer on with, which is what goes in that liquid tank. And I also pull a uh, tank behind the planter. We'll get to that later. But anyway, the way that this works, basically you're driving the planter forward, and I don't know if you can see it real well, but this blade is kind of on an angle. It's not straight with the row unit behind it. And so this blade kind of runs through the soil on just a little bit of an angle, and it creates a gap behind it. And this piece right here is a boot that kind of makes a slot in the soil. And then the fertilizer comes out of this tube right down here 
So then the, it, the fertilizer dribbles out of there, it falls down behind this, and it gets put into the soil. Now, it's in theory, this is running two inches offset from the seed opener. So you can see um, right back there is where the seed is dropping out. So this is supposed to be two inches over, and it's also technically supposed to be two inches deeper. I don't really want it two inches deeper though. I really would like it right next to the seed, just two inches offset. So um, I don't think we're going four inches deep anyway. So if I plant the seed two inches deep, uh, two by two, they call it, would be two inches below the seed, would be four inches deep. And I don't think there's any way these openers are going four inches deep. So it's doing what I want it to do. We're putting the fertilizer where I want it to be. And uh, that's kind of how that works. There's a spring on here in case we hit a rock or something to give it some give. So it'll flex up out of the way. Uh, this hose here is obviously where the fertilizer is coming from. Uh, right here, this yellow piece is a check valve to keep it from dribbling. I also have on here, if you trace these lines back, uh, these are gauges to show me whether the fertilizer is actually flowing through there. Now that I've gotten all of those off of there and kind of shown you how fertilizer system works for the most part, um, if you have any questions on that specifically, let me know. I will try and answer them. So I'm doing some uh, inspections here, just kind of looking over all these openers, making sure that there's no bearings out, everything turns smoothly, it's not real loose. Um, we do have a little bit of play in some of these bushings and uh, joints up here, but it's really not, it's not bad. And so I'm not going to worry about that. The other thing I was worried about is how worn our blades are. Um, they measure right at uh, about 14 and 3 quarters across. I'm pretty sure new they're 16. I don't have a new one on hand to be able to measure against it, but uh, so they are worn a fair amount. Although I don't think I'm gonna replace them. I think I'll give them another year and we'll probably end up replacing them next year. So, uh, and these boots while worn, because this should be square, um, we'll replace them at the same time we replace the seat openers so that everything's new together and they all wear the same and stuff. So I think we can just uh, clean these up a little bit. I want to run a pipe cleaner through there. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, I hate to get the power washer back out, but I sort of want to clean up this stuff underneath where the gauge wheels mount. And I need to clean up these shafts on the brackets that mount the gauge wheels. Try and get some of this mud off there. These I will probably carry over and uh, power wash over there or just hose them off maybe that'll get most of the dirt off of them so anyway that's what i'm working on oh other thing i wanted to do was take apart one of these and check how big our uh, seed disc openers are and wear and stuff and we got to do some some maintenance to those anyway so uh that'll tell me or we can measure those and it'll tell me how much wear there is these start new at 15 if they get below 15 and a half they get replaced that's just automatic so we'll see uh what they look like here One of these is left-handed, one of them's right-handed. Yeah. Okay. This is the regular side. The other side is backwards. And if you put an impact on it and just keep beating on it until it goes, you will, in fact, strip out the stud. Don't ask me how I know. Okay. So now we need to measure that. Ooh, look at that. 14 and... Seven eighths. I would say these are in pretty good shape. I don't think I replaced them last year. They got to be two years use on them. Of course, we didn't put very many acres on them last year. So I guess that's good. So we don't need to do those. We do need to check the, the gaps on them and make sure because there's some uh, shims that go on here. And you got to have a certain amount of contact between the blades in the front here. And so we'll put this one back on and then we'll get a couple of cards and measure that. Make sure that that's within spec. If we need to adjust it, we will. Um... These are seed tube guards. They look like they're in pretty good shape, so I'm not too worried about that. I do want to take seed tubes out, clean them up, and we'll need to adjust our Keatons here, these seed firmers. I'll explain how all this stuff works some other time, but uh, yeah, I want to kind of look at these. I don't know if they need to be replaced, maybe. They don't seem too bad, actually. So uh, anyway, that's kind of what we got to work on. 16 rows, it takes a while to go back through all this stuff.
Seed truck's here, gotta go get it unloaded. All right, so honestly, I have no idea what the last clip that I just recorded or you just watched was. Um, I have, in the last two hours, unloaded two seed trucks, only one of which I knew was actually coming. The other one just showed up when I was already halfway to lunch. Uh, went and talked, well, tried to talk to one of the potential seed customers that I've been working on. Didn't find anybody there. Ate lunch, uh, did some work on a computer, paid some bills, sent some stuff out. Anyway, now I'm back. Let's finish working on this planner or get back to working on this planner, I guess. So, um, I think what I want to do yesterday's video, I promised you that I would kind of walk you through how the rest of this planner or how the planner works. We talked about the fertilizer system a little bit. Let's talk about the rest of it, kind of go through what each thing's function is on the planner, how that works. And you know, the obvious, the goal is to get the seed in the ground so that they all come up nice and even and we get a good established crop, right? So how does this machine do that? Well, for starters, the seed goes in these two big tanks in the center. So this uh, uh, planner has what we call CCS, which is a central commodity system. And instead of having a box that you put a bag of seed in on every row, it has two big tanks in the center. We fill those up and then there's a big fan right here. It blows air through these big tubes, hoses, which then pick up seed out of the bottom of them boxes, blows it through all of these smaller hoses into the little mini hoppers on each row. So that's how the seed gets from the center to each row. Now on them, there are these meters. So the seed, see how dirty that is, not terrible. The seed falls down in there through at the bottom of this little elbow. And then in here is where we put our seed discs. And they're not in here right now because we don't store them in the planter in the winter. Um, but there's a plate that bolts on here and there's a bunch of holes all the way around the outside of that plate and it spins. So this turns and it spins that plate. And you see this hose right here? This is our vacuum hose, big fan right here, that's sucking air out. So it's sucking air through there like a vacuum. And it, it basically, it sucks air through all those little holes on the plate, which then as that plate turns, the seed is down here. So it's, it's, got a vacuum pressure behind the plate seed gets sucked on to the holes in that plate just like on a vacuum would and the plates turning it comes up over here and then it gets past this point in the meter and the vacuum gets cut off where the seal stops it at that point the seed drops off the plate and falls down through the seed tube which is in here we kind of showed you that earlier when i had that one off um, but basically it falls out then down here. So the seed is now in the bottom of the, the furrow, which has been created by these two discs. So these discs are uh, what we call a true V opener. And if you look at the front, or kind of up from the bottom here, I guess, they're right tight together here. There's no gap in between them. And then as they turn, they spread apart and it separates. And what that is doing is creating the slot for the seed to fall into. So then that seed uh, uh, falls out of the seed tube. It's down in the bottom of that slot. This is our seed firmer. It basically just pushes it down into the bottom of that trench to make sure that it's got good contact with the dirt. And then we follow up with these, our closing wheels, which kind of ride on, uh, 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 on both sides of the seed trench here and they push the dirt back in on top of it so that it uh, covers up the seed and makes sure that there is good seed to soil contact so that the uh, seed will absorb some water and start to grow. So that's the basics of how this works. Uh, it's a little bit easier to see with a uh, plate in there or how the meters turn. In fact, if you go way back in my videos, about three or four years ago, I made a GoPro video uh, showing how the, those plates turn and the seeds sticking to them. I'll try and remember to put a card up here so you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, so those plates turn and this planter is driven by hydraulics. So uh, we have two hydraulic motors. One is right here that drives the left half of the planter. The other one is on the other side that drives the right half of the planter. And basically those motors turn at a given speed to determine how many or how fast those plates turn. The faster they turn, the more seeds get dropped quicker, which basically ups the, the population, right? So uh, if you've seen my videos where we were making planning prescription maps, 
that's how it controls and follows that map. It changes the speed of that hydraulic motor. Now my speed in the tractor and how fast we're driving also affects that. So that uh, hydraulic motor speeds up and slows down based on how fast we're driving. On uh, some of the newer planners now that are going to electric drive, I would love to be able to upgrade to an electric drive planner. They're expensive, it's not in a budget right now. Um, they also have a high speed option where instead of that seed tube where the seed just drops down from the bottom of the meter to the ground, it actually has a belt in there with a brush that uh, delivers the seed right to the bottom of the seed trench and it's controlled the whole way so it's not dropping and bouncing and tumbling its way down there. Uh, controls the environment so that it's better spacing uh, and, and population control. So um, if you guys have questions, please let me know below. I will answer them. This right here is our fertilizer pump. Uh, it's driven off of a uh, tire that runs on top of the tire on the ground. So that turns and it, it spins the fertilizer pump, which controls uh, how much fertilizer goes uh, out, you know, pumps it to each individual row. Uh, basically there's a, oh, well, let's see. Here's the hose coming out of our tank that goes into the pump and comes out into these two up here, one for each side which uh, let me walk around the front of the planner here. It, uh, that, that hose feeds into this distribution block right here. And then there are a bunch of little hoses that come out of the back of that. They go in the bottom of these gauges. And then the, these gauges, there's a hose that comes out and it goes to each row uh, through this check valve and into the openers like I showed earlier. Let's see, what else? I think that's most of it for now. Seriously, leave me questions, I'll answer them. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to go through and check on the uh, Truvy openers and make sure that they're all adjusted right. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that right now. So we're, we've got this uh, opener where there's the two blades and they're kind of on an angle to each other, but there's this uh, area right here where they actually touch. And then they kind of spread apart as you go around. You can see how open they are here up on the opposite side and kind of how that works. But what we need to do is measure how much distance there is where those blades are actually touching each other. So I'm going to take a business card. And we're going to slide it in that way and then we're going to take one and slide it in from the bottom. And at that point, that's kind of the contact area. So then we take our tape measure and we measure that distance. And right now we're about two and a half inches. So the spec in the book is from one and a half to two and a half inches of contact area is ideal. And we are within that spec range, uh, kind of on the high side of it, but uh, that will work. So we're gonna leave them alone and I'm gonna go through and check every row like that and make sure they're all right. Well, I checked all of those uh, openers and they were all good no bearings out everything looks good from that standpoint so uh, i'm happy about that um i'm going to keep just kind of going through stuff here a little bit this afternoon but i do want to keep working on my prescription maps that i've been doing so i'm going to do that can you guys see out that window no i don't think you can phil's out there power washing the truck which is good apparently he must be done hauling for a little while anyway um, somebody asked me a question about the prescription maps that I was making the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that here in a minute. So somebody was asking me when I'm making my prescription maps about, um, more or less the size of each data point and how the planner is, uh, knows to not just keep switching back and forth really quickly between different populations, more or less, I guess. And so I kind of wanted to address how it does that. So this is what our typical yield map looks like. And you can see that there are a ton of little individual data points. Each different color, say like right in here, those little tiny slivers are a different data point. All of the data points on the entire map are basically that size. And you can see how that would be jumping around way too much to create any kind of useful data. Well, there's a little button up here that turns it into a contour map where it averages areas out and it eliminates the sudden and abrupt changes. And so basically that is how we get it to using um, larger zones rather than individual data points 
like this one is. And you can see, you know, there's clearly a zone through here, here, over here. We've got some poorer ones down here. Uh, this one, this one. And so by turning those into to bigger zones, which you can see, still follow, um, it creates a much more usable map for us. This is that uh, same field now after I've combined uh, six years of corn yield data into one composite map. And you can see there's still a ton of variability and there are some smaller zones, but nothing near like what those uh, individual data points from one year are. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, tomorrow's plan is to work on this planter some more. I'll probably start cleaning out um, row units. Like I said, we gotta wash these out, get all that dirt out of there, clean up the brushes and the seals and make sure everything looks okay inside the meters themselves. So I'll uh, work on that. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna get through this planter. It's gonna go quicker than I thought it would because we don't have to replace any parts and I was able to get all them fertilizer openers apart. So uh, that's a good thing. Leave me questions and comments down below. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, like the video and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Have a good night guys, we'll see you tomorrow.